Here at Kentucky Tennessee Living, we strive to keep this site non-political in nature. All historical events posted are those that change the lives of future generations and help to give minors a voice in their working and living conditions. As well as we remember those who fought on both sides of the Civil War, all events posted are for the benefit of remembering who we are as the American Appalachian people. Between the years of April 12, 1861 and May 9, 1865, the war between the states raged. The peace of the Appalachian Mountains was broken as brother took up arms against brother. Several battles were won and lost in the area of Letcher County and we will try to cover as many of them as possible. Several of the generals and other significant military men went on later to hold major positions in U.S. politics after the war. We will begin our journey into the Civil War with the life of Colonel John Stuart Williams, who would be the first to capture Pound Gap. Pound Gap is located on the state line between Kentucky and Virginia. During the Civil War, the North and the South realized the importance of this road to the state of Virginia to move troops quickly into the battle areas of Kentucky. It was also used as a thoroughfare for moving troops between Central and Eastern Kentucky. The battle for Pound Gap was one of the least known but one of the more significant battles during the war because of the topography of the land. Born John Stuart Williams on either June 28, 1818 or July 10, 1818 in Mount Sterling, Kentucky. Several sources have one or the other of his date of birth listed. He graduated from school in Mount Sterling. He then moved on and graduated from Miami University in Oxford, Ohio in 1839. His main focus of study was law and was admitted to the bar in the state of Kentucky in 1840. He then set up and practiced law in Paris Bourbon County, Kentucky. Under President James K. Polk, the United States had a belief in manifest destiny to expand westward across the land. This idea came into conflict with the militarily divided Mexico at the Rio Grande on April 25, 1846. A Mexican cavalry attacked a group of U.S. soldiers in a disputed military zone. This act led to war. Hearing the call of duty, Williams served in the Mexican-American War. His first assignment was as a captain of the independent company that would be attached to the 6th U.S. Infantry. He would then serve as a colonel of the 4th Regiment of the Kentucky Volunteers. Because of his bravery in the Battle of Cerro Gardo, he earned the nickname Sarah Gardo Williams. Sarah Gardo was the mountain pass in the eastern Mexico region between Veracruz and Jalapa during the turning point in the war. Returning from the war, Williams served in the Kentucky House of Representatives from 1851 through 1853 as a Democrat. He was initially opposed to the idea of succession. However, he did also strongly believe in the state's rights to govern. Representative Williams strongly disagreed with President Abraham Lincoln's policies and so began supporting the Confederacy. In November of 1861, Williams traveled to Prestonsburg, Kentucky and enlisted in the Confederate Army. When the Civil War began, Williams was commissioned as a colonel in the 5th Kentucky Infantry and served under General Humphrey Marshall in southwestern Virginia. In 1861, the Confederate States Army under the command of Colonel John S. Williams took control of Pound Gap. Confederate State troops maintained large camps on both sides of Pound Gap on March 16, 1862. In the fall of 1862, Williams participated in Marshall's ill-fated invasion of eastern Kentucky. However, Williams would continue to fight with Marshall and they won a victory at the Battle of Princeton Courthouse. Marshall would resign from this post and was sent to eastern Tennessee. While in Tennessee, Williams' brigade fought under the command of William W. Loring. His brigade fought skirmishes at Fayetteville through Charleston. John A. Coles replaced Loring as commanding officer as Loring was transferred to Mississippi. Williams received a promotion in the spring of 1863 to Brigadier General and took command of the Department of Southwestern Virginia, replacing the command of John A. Coles. 
He then established a base at Saltville, Virginia and organized a brigade cavalry. In the fall of 1863, Williams met and would help resist Ambrose Burnside's invasion as they tried to advance into eastern Tennessee. The Battle of Blue Springs would be fought on October 10, 1863, and the Battle of Henderson's Mill would be fought November 14, 1863. There would also be several other skirmishes to resist Burnside and his men. Because of the losses that he was sustaining, Williams resigned his position as Brigadier General. He went to Georgia and joined and assumed command of the Kentucky forces from John Wheeler in June 1864. There, he was to fight against Sherman. His participation led to the occupation of Sherman in Atlanta, Georgia. His leadership played a significant role as the Confederate Army would win a victory at Saltville, Virginia in the fall of 1864. Because of the victory at Saltville, Williams received a resolution of gratitude from the Second Confederate Congress in the fall of 1864. After the surrender of Lee in 1865, Williams also surrendered. Williams returned to Winchester, Kentucky, where he had a farm. He remained at his home for eight years pursuing agricultural pursuits. Williams returned to the political theater in 1873 with his next term in office in the Kentucky State Representative. He would serve two terms with his last starting in 1875. Williams then ran for office of Governor of Kentucky in 1875 but was unsuccessful. The following year, he was a presidential elector on the Democratic ticket. From March 4, 1879 to March 3, 1885, Williams was elected to the United States Senate. He lost his re-election bid for the office. John Williams became partners with the publisher of the Louisville Courier-Journal, Walter N. Helderman, in the late 1880s. Together they became involved in land development in Florida and would establish the town of Naples, Florida. John Williams would die in Mount Sterling on July 17, 1898 at the age of 80. He was interred at Winchester Cemetery in Winchester, Kentucky with the Holloway family. Thank you for watching our video about Colonel John Stuart Williams. We thank you for continuing to support Kentucky Tennessee Living as we bring you the history of the Appalachian Mountains. Please like, subscribe, and share below. Also hit the bell for notifications of future videos. And once again, be sure to leave us a hey y'all in the comment section below. Thank you for continuing to support us and watch our videos.